Hi there. My name is Rafi Zabor. This is a book I wrote. It's called Street Legal. Uh, there's a smoking Buddha and some Northern California scenery on the cover. It's set in Northern California in about 2012, just before the pre-legalization of uh, recreational use of mar marijuana in the California scene at the time. Um, very happy that it's been chosen as, uh, as a long lister for the other book award. And uh, no further explanation needed. I'm going to read you uh, page, chapter one, page one. Nothing else you need to know, so just settle back, uh, read a few pages, and I hope you enjoy the rhyme. Even before his eyes were open without a clock, Eli knew it was too early for this, but woke up to the Pearl Jam ringtone, already sure who was calling. She'd been on his case a lot lately, and here comes more. Dad gone almost two years, and she still wasn't back to her old self. He rolled onto his left side, tapped the phone, put it to his cheek, and tried to keep his, so his tone humorous. Leave me alone, ma, he said, realizing as he spoke he was loud enough to wake Suki, her body heat behind him as he rose on one elbow to get this conversation over with. But it was Teddy. Hey, Pepina, this is Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. Using a code from some old TV show in his cracky old man accent, any, cop, any dumb cop could break it, let alone Captain Bob Pollock. Hi, Grandpa, Eli said, instead of a few other choice words ready to go. I, I want you here by yesterday, using that cracky voice heavier now. I'm going crazy as a coot up here. Have yourself some Ovaltine and I'll get there in a while. Feed corn crop needs looking after, Pepina. Feed corn crop might be going funny. In a minute, Eli said, clicked off and settled his body back into bed. Suki, quiet and breathing even, was pretending to be asleep or maybe hoping to get back to it. Teddy, he told her anyway. I don't trust him, she said. Rolled onto her side, her back to him. Lovely square shoulders, delicate line of spinal bones. She didn't look pregnant from there, and Eli tried to pretend for now. Baby, he explained. Then the guitar riff from Not For You cranked again, and he picked up. Give me half an hour, dude, he said, somehow knowing by the shade of silence on the other end that he'd been right the first time and wrong the second time. No, no, he'd been wrong both times. No, wait, right the first time, really. He was losing count, but he had to finish his line anyway. I'll be ready to check the crops in just one skinny-ass hour, man. You told me you were quitting, his mother said. I have to take this in the other room. As he left, Suki rolled onto her back to give him the fish eye, but all he could see was the smooth, tanned, five-month five mound that was still beautiful to him, her belly, which I just want to show you. There wasn't far to go in this tiny blue shack at the end of a driveway. Though he didn't think it'd been built as a garage, the division into rooms was part of the structure and the low tilted roof cramping things close at funny angles. The DJ sound system almost filled the tiny living room with the power amp, hogging the armchair, which is what you get for trying to quit the skunk business and do something else, but try to tell your mother that. I don't care about the weed, honey, she was saying. You know I don't object to it morally. I care about you getting caught. And face it, Eli, you're not a very good criminal. Be legal almost any day now, Mom. Not my point, and not today, he said. Listen to me, Eli. Stop what you're doing and listen to me. He stopped what he was doing and listened to her. Then, thinking ahead, coffee, and did Suki put the leftover pizza in the fridge or did the bugs get to it, and another coffee in a thermo cup to take with him in the car, put, back, put the back seats down and load the toolbox. He wondered if his mother could see the shape of Suki's belly from all the way on the island of, off Seattle. She might be calling from the ferry. She liked to talk when she was already on the move to right here in Eureka, California. She could be funny that way. What are you not telling me? She stopped her rap to ask him. See? Teddy's was outside town and in the woods, with a dirt approach road up through the spruce and cedar, motion detectors and security cameras hidden in the trees, and the first thing you saw when you got there was the big deck jutting from the dark gray angular weathered wood slat structure that hung back and kind of hid behind it, the prow of a ship waiting for the flood. No, actually some kind of self-assertion, threat. The world looks sharp today, in focus, despite the not-so-great start on the phone first thing. Eli didn't want to jinx it, but he could swear he was having one of his clear brain days. Got one every once so often. The planets are electrons in his head, aligned and rotating just right for a change. 
Cool if it had lasted a while, get some hours in before you know. Things got less good again. Eli pulled his Saab 900, faded blue paint with dings and scratches, but the work still good, into the shade of the deck next to Seti's red-dusted white beamer and trudged up the noisy wooden stairs past the nothing ground floor to the spaceship-looking rooms where Teddy spent most of his time with the view of the forest on all sides through long windows. No idea what, sh what today's show would be until he saw the architectural model spread across the big new trestle table in the middle of the living room and Teddy posed over it, hands on top and looking too busy looking down at it was the idea to notice Eli coming in. If you wanted to build an old-time skunk dealer, Teddy was the pattern you should work from. Shoulder length, dirty blonde hair, parted in the middle, hanging loose, bony face and sharp eyes, buckskin vested shirtless body, skinny but tightly muscled, pecs and abs still etched at 40 watt, and a shiny silver and turquoise eye thing hanging from his neck on the leather thong, making like a pendulum because Teddy had, Teddy had only just settled on the pose while Eli was coming up the stairs. Eli himself, favored looking inconspicuous, if you could be inconspicuous at six foot three, and a musculature he'd done almost nothing to earn, and his drinking problem should have blunted even at 23. But standing there, a big kid, with a blondish more or less crew cut and t-shirt and jeans that said recre marine recruiting, more than dope, in dope involved professional, Eli looked, Eli liked looking trim and clean, but the difference between him and his boss was also a measure of his status in the industry. Teddy's safe behind the curtain, and Eli's still out there in daylight, mostly. I'm still trying to figure out what the other rides we could we could put in here, Teddy said, without looking up from the maybe 10-foot-wide mock-up of Smugglerville or Doper's Dream, and one name Eli didn't even slightly understand, Vineland, because we didn't grow on vines and was a bush. Anyway, they hadn't settled on a name yet for the theme park Teddy and three other local champions of the trade were going to build because they were sure this was it, 2012, the year shit goes legal. Personally, Eli wasn't so sure. And once that happened, there'd be no way to compete with the people already making it big in the legal trade, and then if you threw in the majors, forget about it. Philip Morris had already copyrighted the brand name Marley, but Rolly Inc. had beat them to it with a pack of whalers, and both companies had bought enormous tracts of land in the valley, planning on the time was coming soon. We got the car chase, car chase track run through here, Teddy was telling him, into the package drop show, but we can't use a real plane because the bundle might fall on a customer and kill him, so we have to run a fake little plane on a wire. I hate that. And he made us a nice club rave, but we need some other shit. For one thing, the chase car on the roller coaster can't catch up. It has to be a way to gear it different so it can. How about a Buster Rama ride? said Eli. Will, will you round the people up, cuff and strip, cavity search them, put them in cells and have guys in uniforms piss on them through the bars? That'd work, said Teddy. Maybe all we really need is get them righteously ripped and have something soft and for them to fall on. Safety considerations will be of prime importance in this enterprise. Teddy, why would people come to you if they can buy it at the gas station? Bro, would you smoke a Marley? Teddy finally looked up at Eli to make a sour ball face at the thought of it. There's always going to be room for primo artisanal weed with quality, at least on the haagen dazs Mercedes Benz principle of, like, you know, do a decent job of what you do. Eli thought of all the extra product and tax regulations the industry would lay on the business if they tried to sell their own, plus the fact that old dealers like Teddy and them would never get licensed by the state, but he decided not to mention it. Franklin and the other guys have a Smugglerville model, too, he asked him. Teddy nodded. Steiner had some crews come out from the architects and set them up yesterday for all of us. You'll come up with outstanding shit inside a week, Eli told him. <clears throat> Teddy said, we, we could get people to load trucks all night, but that much, might be too much like work. Teddy looked speculatively down at the model and lifted the roof off Club Rave. Dark gray shingles with a giant Gila monster standing on it with its mouth open and a huge pink tongue hanging out one side. Teddy looked at it. You think this tongue is anatomically correct? Teddy was good at talking like a jerk, but he was a very smart businessman, which is why Eli stayed with him, even with the lousy manners. If he was going to live and learn, it was probably no, this was probably the best place in town to do it for now. Teddy put the roof back on crooked. Tell you the truth, 
I'm not too happy with this as a design. Franklin thinks we should be working along the lines of a Wild West show. You know, live action, reconstructions of famous busts and escapes. I think he's right, but we, we have two other partners to deal with, and Dodge and Wendell got broomsticks up their asses. Listen, what? I want you to go check Six North. Been getting reports about things happening up there. What things, Eli asked. Did you go up? Teddy did a long, slow head shake, the silver turquoise eye thing scraping across his hairless geometric pecs. That's why you get the big bucks, Eli. People told me about lights, some kind of noises up there. Take a look, give me a call when you're in place, and send me pictures. Close-ups of the plants, buds and leaves both. I want to see for myself when we should harvest. Three weeks from now, last time I looked, said Eli, already not wanting to go up there. Take the car, go up there, look again. 